Hey there, welcome to my electronics channel. And in this video, I want to talk about Thevenin's theorem or Thevenin equivalent circuits. And basically, Thevenin's theorem states that any linear bilateral AC circuit or DC circuit, but we're gonna I'm gonna focus on AC circuits in this in this uh, video, can be reduced into a two-terminal circuit with a single voltage source in series with a single impedance. So basically what this means is that I could have any circuit with voltage sources and resistors and inductors and maybe capacitors and this circuit could be even more complicated. Maybe there's a current source this is all for AC with more inductors, resistors, and capacitors. And then ultimately, this is connected to some, to some load, some, a load with some kind of impedance. Thevenin's theorem says that I can take all of this part and convert it into something that looks like a voltage source of some amount along with an impedance connected in series to it of some amount. This is the Thevenin equivalent impedance and this is the Thevenin equivalent voltage. We're talking about AC. I'm going to represent these as vectors because those mean that these have a magnitude and a direction or in other words a magnitude and a phase shift and then that is connected to whatever the load is. Now one advantage of being able to do this Thevenin's theorem is that if this load changes, if I'd done an analysis on this whole circuit to figure out what the voltage across this load is, if that load changes then everything changes in the circuit. However, if I have taken this part and reduced it to its Thevenin equivalent, then when the load changes, the nature of the voltage and current on that load is going to change as well, but then I only have two elements that are connected to that load, so it makes my new calculations very easy to do. One thing to note, and even though I drew these elements as resistors, inductors, and capacitors, we really want to know what the impedances of each one of those components are. And the, of course, the impedance is dependent on the frequency. So the caveat is that if this circuit contains reactive elements, then the Thevenin equivalent circuit is only valid at the frequency for which the reactances or the impedances were, were determined. Now I want to go through the process of finding out the Thevenin or determining the Thevenin equivalent circuit for, for a given circuit. So basically what this first step is saying, remove the branch across which the Thevenin equivalent circuit is to be found. So if I have this circuit that's made up of a bunch of components, and then ultimately all these components are connected to a load of some kind, so I'm trying to figure out the Thevenin equivalent for this circuit. So the first thing, remove the branch across which the Thevenin equivalent circuit is to be found. So basically I'm going to be removing this part of the circuit. The second step is to label the resulting terminals A and B. So that terminal will be A and that terminal will be B. This is basically just for housekeeping. The next step is to set all of the independent sources to zero and Two types of sources, voltage sources, current sources. Voltage sources become shorts, current sources become opens. So seeing how this is a voltage source, that would become a short. If I had, if this was a current source, then I would break the circuit there and it would become an open. The next step is to find the equivalent impedance between points A and B after you've, after you've set all the sources to zero. Now this will be fairly simple since I've shorted that out, that shorts out these two components and that means that the equivalent impedance between A and B would be the impedance of this inductor in parallel to the impedance of this capacitor. The resulting impedance will be my Thevenin equivalent impedance. Next I will replace all my sources, in this case I would just place replace the voltage source here, and then determine the open circuit voltage between A and B with all of those sources back in place. This voltage is my Thevenin equivalent voltage, or VTH. And it will have a magnitude and a phase angle, so I'm drawing it as a phaser here. So the last step is to redraw the circuit 
with the feminine equivalent voltage source connected to it connected in series with the feminine equivalent impedance all connected to my points a and b so this circuit would be equivalent to this circuit and again an advantage of doing that is that if my load between points A and B changes, if I'm looking at this circuit, I would have to redo all of the calculations with all of these components in it. However, if I've come up with a Thevenin equivalent circuit and I put a new load between A and B, I only have the source and the Thevenin equivalent impedance in my calculation, and that just makes my, my analysis, my new analysis, much easier to do. All right, let's do an example now. So I've got this circuit with a load connected to it here. And I want to reduce this part of the circuit to the Thevenin equivalent circuit. So that would be, I need a, a Thevenin equivalent voltage in series with a Thevenin equivalent impedance. All right, step one, remove the branch across which the Thevenin equivalent circuit is to be found. So that's this branch right here. So it is now removed. Step two, label the resulting terminals A and B. So there's terminal A and there's terminal B. Step four is set all the independent sources to zero. So all of my voltage sources will become shorts. And all of my current sources will become opens. Okay, so far so good. Been pretty, it's been pretty straightforward. Step number four now, determine the equivalent impedance between points A and B. And this is the Thevenin equivalent impedance. So between these two points, what is the impedance seen looking back into the circuit? So the equivalent impedance between those two points. I won't go through all of the steps in this process. I will just set it up. The Thevenin equivalent impedance is going to be equal to this 10 ohm resistor in series with the rest of the circuit. And the rest of the circuit is this 16 ohm capacitor in parallel with the series combination of this 24 ohm inductor and this 12 ohm resistor. So I've got a 16 ohm capacitor, so that's negative J 16 ohms, in parallel with a 24 ohm inductor, so that'll be J 24 ohms plus the 12 ohm resistor. Now it'll take a few steps of arithmetic to combine those resistors together and then combine the parallel combination and then finally combine the, the series combination of resistors there. But ultimately the answer comes out to 14.769 ohms minus J35.84. Ohms. So that's the answer in rectangular form in polar coordinates. This is 38.77 ohms with a phase angle of negative 67.61 degrees. So that is my Thevenin equivalent resistance. Step number five is to replace the sources and find the open circuit voltage between points A and B. So this is going to involve putting that current source back in here. It was 0.5 amps with a phase angle of zero degrees and putting the voltage source back in place too. And this was five volts with a phase angle of zero degrees. And now what I wanna find is the voltage between those two points with those sources back in place and that is will be my Thevenin equivalent voltage. I think the simplest way to figure out what the Thevenin equivalent voltage is for this circuit is to use the superposition principle. So basically look at that voltage between A and B when I just have the current source, then look at the voltage across A and B when I just have the voltage source, then add those two voltages together. So first of all, due to the current source, I will short out this voltage, then the voltage between A and B is going to be based on this current from the current source going through this equivalent resistance, 
which is the Thevenin equivalent resistance. So that th voltage between A and B due to the current source is simply going to be equal to negative of 0 0.5 amps with a phase angle of 0 degrees times the 38.77 ohms with a phase angle of negative 67.61 degrees of the Thevenin equivalent resistance, just the, the equivalent resistance of these resistors combined together. When I multiply all that out, I get negative 19.385 volts with a phase angle of negative 67.61 degrees. In rectangular coordinates, that is equal to negative 7.384 plus J17.924 volts. Then I need to figure out what the voltage between A and B is due to this 5 volt source with the current source removed. So what is due to the voltage source? The voltage between A and B is actually also fairly simple to figure out. Once I open this up, that also removes the 10 ohm capacitor from the circuit. And so what I have is that 5 volts gets split between the 24 ohms, the 16 ohm capacitor, and the 12 ohm resistor. And so it's, it's a simple voltage divider network. So I get 5 volts, angle 0, and then it's the 16 ohms that it's across, 16 ohm uh, capacitor. So I get negative J 16 ohms over the sum of all of those three components, the inductor, the capacitor, and the resistor. So I get 12 ohm resistor plus the 24 ohm inductor minus the 16 ohm capacitor. And the fraction of voltage that is across the 16 ohm capacitor works out to negative 3.077 volts minus J 4.615 volts. In rectangular form in polar coordinates that's 5.547 volts with a phase angle of negative 123.69 degrees. The last step is to add the voltage due to the current source to the voltage due to the voltage source and I end up with Seven po negative 7.38 volts plus J 17.924 volts plus negative 3.077 volts minus J 4.615 volts. So the total Thevenin equivalent voltage is equal to the sum of that plus that, which equals negative 10.461 plus J 13.309 volts in rectangular form or in polar coordinates, it is 16.93 volts with a phase angle of 128.17 degrees. Very last thing to do is to redraw the circuit as its Thevenin equivalent. And the Thevenin equivalent is always going to look like this, a voltage source in series with an impedance. And it's just a matter now of plugging the numbers in now that I know them. The voltage source is 16.93 volts with a phase angle of 128.17 degrees, and the Thevenin equivalent impedance here is 38.77 ohms with a phase angle of negative 67.61 degrees. If I have a load connected here, and I know what this load is, let's say it's just a 10 ohm resistor, 10 ohms with a phase angle of zero degrees, I can now very easily find out what the load is for that particular resistor. Figuring out that load voltage is going to be simply a matter of splitting this Thevenin equivalent voltage between the Thevenin equivalent resistance and my our load resistor. Voltage divider circuit, voltage divider equation here. Take my Thevenin equivalent voltage. And with the voltage divider equation, I will have 10 ohms with a phase angle of 0 degrees over the 38.77 ohms 
phase angle of negative 67.61. Oh, look, I got a degree symbol right there. Plus 10 ohms. 10 ohms with a phase angle of 0 degrees. Multiply all that out. And there's a few steps of arithmetic involved there. I'm going to save myself the trouble and not do that since I've already got it worked out to be 3.89 volts with a phase angle of negative 176.47 degrees. One last thing we could do is what is figure out the power to that load. The power to the load is going to be 3.89 volts squared divided by 10 ohms, which works out to 1.51 watts. Thank you.